welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that hopefully you're watching me in black and white. Panic not. Just like the Wizard of Oz, Technicolor is on the way. But I don't want you to get a sneak preview of even the colours that I've used until you've watched the film. Because this is round five with the beautiful Linda in my photo inspiration series. So, if you want to find out exactly what the photo is that we're using this time for inspiration and what it looks like, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right. I'm hoping the intro was in black and white, so hello, welcome to Tech Yellow. <laughs> um, this is the continuation of my photo inspiration series, and I am absolutely delighted that this is now round five with the beautiful Linda. Um, I've been clapping a lot with the Swedish YouTubers. I don't know if I was a Swede in a previous life and, and just feel drawn to them. Or whether Swedish YouTubers use colour more than other nationalities do. Um, but I discovered Linda through Jessica. And when I first started watching her, I think she had like seven subscribers. But I absolutely adored the looks that she was producing. And her voice is so calming and so restful. I mean, she could have an ASMR channel. And I just absolutely fell in love with the woman, literally after like one film of hers. I was subscribed, I was binge watching. Um, so I shot her a message saying, would she like to collab? Um, she was a little bit shocked because obviously seven subscribers, she wasn't expecting anybody to ask her to collab. But I didn't care about that. I don't care whether you've got seven subscribers, seven hundred, seven thousand, seven million. If I like your personality and the looks that you produce, then I will happily collab with you. So we start. We did our first collab together, and she was oh bless her heart. She was absolutely over, overwhelmed by it all. Um, and since then, she's been involved in other collabs, and her channel's really starting to grow, which I love seeing because I'm just so happy that other people are getting to enjoy her channel the same way I do. So, round five. I've got the picture in front of me. I'm going to stick it up here. It's a, a sunset on a beautiful beach somewhere. As you can see, it's mainly pinks, purples, lilacs, um, with a big splodge of bright orangey yellow sun in the middle. Um, and if you wanted to, the, the clouds are such a deep purple, they're almost black. And you know me and my pinks and purples. It's been a while since I've done a look like that, so I shot a load of photos over. Linda liked this one best, so that's the one we're doing. So I decided to drag out an oldie, but a favourite. It's my slush and my slush too, which of course is one of my newest palettes. Um, September Rose was actually the first company to give me a discount code. Now, when she gave it to me, it was non-affiliated. I didn't mind that. I was just happy that you got a discount. To be honest, I used that discount as well. Why not? Um, and then she messaged me just before Brew came out. Um, I'll just show you what Brew looks like. 
Brew is uh, neutral but not not boring palette. Uh, she messaged me just before that came out and said, "Look, so many people have used your code. You've sent so many um, orders my way. Um, I want to add you to my affiliate program. So now, if you use my code, um, I earn a little bit of money." And she now sends me the palettes, so I got this one for free. This one I paid for. This one I got for free. Will this affect? How I review palettes to you? Oh God, no! I'm a shit liar. You'd see through me in in no time. But what I love about these is the original slush is a mixture of mattes and shimmers, and I love the way it's in uh, sort of colour families because for people who are it, especially just starting, it can be difficult when colours are jumbled all over the place for them to actually think, I don't know what sort of look I'm going to make out of that. But done like this, each colour will work perfectly with the rose either side of it, or you could also use a monochrome. So it's it's awesome. And then a slush too is the baby sister of this. She's all matte and she has sort of continuation of the same, exactly the same layouts. So pinks, orange, yellows and greens, blues, purples, but uh, it goes a lot deeper and gives you more options. So these are the two pal palettes that I'm going to be playing with today. Right, uh, this is a teaching channel. Um, I don't always go as in-depth when I'm doing a collab like this, but I do still slip into giving you tips and tricks. Because it's a teaching channel, I don't speed anything up, I don't cut any blending out. So if you're a complete beginner, you can still follow me. Because of this though, my films are usually longer than most people's. Most of my films are sort of 30 to 45 minutes long. If that's too long for you, there's a speed widget out there. Just speed me up. It's not a problem because, darling, unless you tell me, I'm not going to know. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Faces washed, moisturised, SPF and primed. Details of the anti-perspirant primer that I use are in my description box along with any of my discount codes and detailing whether or not I earn from them. The eyeshadow primer that I'm using is this. I have I, I bought a sample size pot of this which is basically the same size pot but just half filled not full and you can see I have not used anything else but this. This has taken over from my MAC paint pot what I love about these, this is shade cotton by the way, uh, they have it in six shades, the deepest being a chocolate brown and a black and then there's sort of three skin tone shades in between the white and the two deepest ones. When it goes on it's not sticky so you can blend straight away, um, it doesn't crease even through my deep set eyes. She says, as it looks like it's creased. Must have put it on a bit thick today. Normally, it doesn't crease, as you can see. But it's just, it's the perfect base. Um, I usually put it on quite thin. You can put it on thicker if you want. Again, details of that are in the description box. Right, now. I've just mentioned that I've got deep set eyes. Now a lot of people with deep set eyes mistakenly believe or are told in error that they have hooded lids. I'm going to explain to you the difference between the two types of lids and explain to you how you can follow any tutorial with those lid shapes. Now when I relax my brows and look straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner, so I don't have a hooded lid. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line, 
part or all of your mobile lid that you have what's known as a, a full or a half hooded lid or a mono or Asian eye. You can still follow any tutorial. Get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Yes, it's stained, it is clean. Um, and just sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between your crease and your brow. So use slightly smaller blending brushes than the person doing the tutorial and you'll be absolutely fine. Now, deep set eyes, mm. sometimes referred to as double lidded eyes. We have the same issues that people with hooded lids get. We get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. If we're doing a cut crease, we have to cut up onto the upper lid rather than just on the socket. And even with glitter glue, we get a bare patch right through here. Let me show you why. If I cover the visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again above it that folds back away inside. If I cover my static lid and do the same, you can see there's lid space there that tucks back in as well. And it's those two lid spaces rubbing together that cause the issue and give us a similar effect that people with hooded lids get. And it's why so many people with deep set or double lidded eyes mistakenly are told or believe that they have hooded lids. The difference with us when we are doing a colour and putting it through our crease, all we have to do is when we relax our brows every so often just sit back and check that the crease colour is visible above where our, our uh, lids meet. Okay. This will become more obvious as I do it myself. Right. Let's start putting some colour on my lids. Uh, I'm going with one of these Jeffrey Morphe brushes. This is the JS8. It's clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to start off by going into Cotton Candy in the original slush, which is a beautiful baby pink. I'm going to start off by popping that just on the I'm not really worried that it's hit there because I'm probably going to do a cut crease or I'll just do something different. I'm really not worried. So I'm just buffing this in to the lid. I think actually I've gone for a little bit of a big brush there but never mind. Just dust the excess off. Tap some of that off with the brush, make it a little bit easier. So I do circular movements. This direction when you're coming away from the nose, and this direction when you're coming back in. Because I'm 45 years old, I've lost 15, 13, 15 to down the last few years. The skin on my eyelids moves. So by doing circular movements and holding the brush right at the end so you don't put too much pressure on you are actually gently moving the skin of your eyelid around so that you don't get any white areas. However, with this eye, I've got very, very deep creasing just here. But you can see it already starting to do the tiger striping or the barcoding effect. Uh, that's where the, the hospital pulled my eye around when I was five years old, because this is the eye that I'm blind in. Um, I didn't go fully blind in it until I was 13, but had restricted vision in it right from a very early age. So the hospital, the hospital used to pull it around something chronic, the ophthalmic. And that's the damage it's done. So, because your lids are not symmetrical, unless you photoshop them like James Charles, always sit back and just check that it matches. I've gone a little bit higher than I usually do this side, so I'm going to have to do the same this side. I usually like to leave a bit of a gap between the colour and the brow, but I've gone a little bit high that side, so I'm going to have to do the same to make it match over here. You can see what I mean about this, um, this primer, you can just blend on it straight away without any problems, which is absolutely great. 
I love this. It, it's so much so I've already got my back up that I've before I even hit pan on that. I bought a second one in case they sold out. Because this is a problem. I find something I like. I tell everybody about it. They all go and buy it, and then when I need to get it, it's sold out. Which is great. I'm really glad that you take my advice and are enjoying the same products that I do. Uh, but I now learn that if I'm recommending something, if I'm going to need a backup, I buy it before I tell you. Right, I've just cleaned this off on a microfiber brush. Microfiber cloth, even. For goodness sake. And I'm going to go in to... I think raspberry on the original slush palette. This is a matte, but it has a slight shimmer in um, the formula. However, when you buff it around and blend it, it blends the the shimmer pigment away and leaves you with the matte element underneath. It's a matte with some shimmer pigments in it. Um, although to be honest it might have shimmer pigments in it because it's next to the shimmer. And I've managed to knock some in. Because I don't remember this being a shimmer before. I'm just gently building this up and then when we hit the point that the two colours meet I'm just going to lightly buff backwards and forwards just to blend the two together. If you find, because I do have dry patches here and here, and I can find sometimes when I'm blending that I end up blending the colour away. If that happens, either grab some more pigment on your brush before you start to blend, which as you can see has sorted the issue out for me there or blend it until you've got the edges as soft as you want and then just come back in with some pigment and just pat the area that you want to build the pigment back up in right I actually prefer it there we go I love this palette, I really do. I think it's it's one of the first rainbow palettes I ever bought. Um, it's when I was just getting into UK indie makeup brands because I've been sort of tail half of 2018 and going into 2019. I say going into, we're now in September, it's my husband's birthday today. And my youngest nephew's birthday, so happy birthday Arlan, birthday hubby. Um, the day I'm filming this, not the day you're watching it. Anyway, um, yeah, I've, I've really sort of started getting into using more indie brands, specifically UK if I could find them, but um, I just... I think indie brands seem to have their finger really on the ball when it comes to colour choices. It's almost like whatever the indie brands come out with, mainstream comes out with a little bit later. Um, when this slush palette came out, literally about four months later you had the, uh, the OPV splash palette came out. The Violet Voss Flamingo palette came out and they were both so similar to this one. And I was just like, yep, yeah, there we go again. Indie companies leading the way. Um, the other thing I like about indie companies, as well as the fact that you're actually supporting a person rather than a corporation. You know, every time you make a sale, you're making somebody smile. Rather than just being a number on a bank balance sheet at the end of the month. But... Because their runs are usually significantly smaller, their quality control is so much higher when it comes to when their, their pigments, etc. Right, I'm going to go into Slush 2, I think. 
just going to clean this brush off and get a slightly smaller one. I must admit, I do like these Jeffrey brushes. Uh, let's grab a synthetic. This is the JS12. Again, it's clean, but it's stained. So, going into slush two, and I'm going to go into triple berry. And I'm going to work that just through that crease there. And bring it up slightly. This is what I was saying about making sure it's visible when you relax your brow. If you have deep set eyes like myself. I'm just going to tiny little circular movements just to buff the edges of that out. Hmm. See, this eye can actually close. But if I closed the other eye, there wouldn't be a great deal of makeup happening. Probably because I'd go out of focus and off screen and wouldn't even realise. So. Right, so you can see there, you can't actually see any of that that I've put on. So I need to go up fractionally. If you go up bit by bit when you're doing it, till you can see it, and that's all you need to do. And then just give it a good old buff to soften the edges, blend it in with the previous colour. Now you see, sometimes circular movements will deal with the bar clothing for me, and sometimes it doesn't. Today it appears to be being nice to me, which is very pleasant indeed. Right, so clean that brush off and I'm going to go into, um, I think, Mint Berry. Again, Slush 2. And I'm just going to do the same thing with this deeper lilac, well, this is more of a lavender than a lilac isn't it, the first shade was a lilac, this one's more of a lavender, and just bring it up to make pink, and have a good old blend, and just buff the two colours together there so they blend nicely together. I'm really enjoying just, I love this series. I, I started this series because it always fascinated me that you see these bigger beauty gurus that, that got all of the, the makeup releases before they were in the shops. Um, and nine times out of ten, they all tend to go very similar shades. Okay, they, they might do different looks with it, but they very often went for the same, what, what I call safe shades. They were always, you know, looking for a brown or a mustard or something to to run through the crease before they then put colourful shadows on. I'm just like, I can't believe that so many people with so many options in a palette are all choosing similar colours and it, it confused me. I, I didn't understand why that would be happening. I, did, I couldn't get my head around the psychology of that. Um, so I thought if we had a photo, because obviously some of the people that I'm clubbing with, um, you know, they may not have the palettes that I've got or they could have palettes that I don't have. So I didn't want to make it palette central. Um, but I, I kind of thought if we have a photo, and the only rules with this is that you can only use the colours that you can see 
in the photo. You can't add a colour in. So if I wanted to put green into this look, for example, I couldn't because there's no green in the picture. Um, but if I wanted to ignore the orange sun, I could do. I could just make this a pure pink and purple look. It's all about how what you see in the picture, you then reflect with it upon your eyes. Mm. And so far, every single one of these that I've done, they've all been different. The people that I've collabed with, we've all produced different looks. There was only one look that was similar, and even that was not exactly the same, you know? Um, and I just, I loved seeing how different people were called to different elements of a photo. The same picture inspires people in very, very different ways. And that was why I started this series. Um, I'll be quite honest, I didn't expect it to become as popular as it has. I love the fact that so many people are enjoying this the same way as me. It, it's great vindication for me that actually yeah, you, you do come up with some good ideas, Ange, you know? Um, which is great and I just, I love collabing with, with different people. I had Anne commented on one of my films, um, please don't stop doing this because I love watching them. And I replied with, so long as people want to collab with me, I'll keep doing it because I've got low, every time I see a photo and think, that would be good for my photo inspiration series, I screenshot it, stick it in a folder on my phone. So I've got loads of inspiration. From photos, be it nature, be it artwork, be it um, computer generated artwork. Uh, I think, you know, one of the looks that I did was where they'd fast frozen alcohol and then looked at it under a very, very high spectrum mi uh, microscope. And it produces all these brilliant colours. Bizarrely, Guinness comes out luminous green. Guinness looks black. But when you fast freeze it and look at it under one of these high spectrum microscopes, it, it comes out this beautiful, luminous, lime green. And that fascinated me. So, you know, there's, there's all different kinds of... I, I started off with um, looks that were sort of galaxies and stars and stuff, because that always interests me. Uh, you know, the colours that you get from that. Sorry, I just might. There we go. Right, still using this brush. I'm going to deepen things up. I'm going to go into purple potion. As I said, the, the beach itself and the um, the dark clouds are so dark purple they almost look black. So this is the deepest purple that I've got. And I'm just going to gently, gently, gently buff this because I don't want to cover up the two colours that I've just put on. But I do want to deepen the crease. Yes, I like that. So yeah, I was I was delighted that so many people enjoyed doing this series with me. Uh, it's really captured people's imagination, which I love. Um, I always give people the option do they want to choose the first picture or shall I? Most people want me to choose, uh, which I don't mind. Like I said, I've got a cartload of photos or folder load of photos on my phone. Um, a couple of people said, no, I'll go first. I'm like, okay, I don't mind. I'm just glad you want to collab. And uh, yeah, it's produced some, it's produced some beautiful photos um, and some epically beautiful looks. I think I might do a halo eye today. Alright, let me I'm just gonna grab a little mirror so that I can sort of look down into it. Because obviously I can't completely close this eye. But if I look down into a mirror you should still be able to see what I'm doing and I should be able to still see what I'm doing as well. Allegedly. I'm just going to deepen up this inner corner as well. I haven't done a halo eye for a while, but I like the idea of maybe having the sun 
popping out of my lid. Like it is popping on the horizon. Oh, I'm getting all poetic on you now. But yeah, I mean, I just, I love this series. I really do. It's, I probably shouldn't be praising it as much as I have because I've created it. But some of the looks that have been created from this um, have been stunning. And, you know, and for example, on one of them, sent a photo over of some artwork that she had actually created herself. And that was just, I love that, you know, people trust me enough to kind of reproduce their artwork in colour on my eyes and to see how it inspires me. Um, she also sent over a photo of a, of a plant from her garden. It's, it's great. I've, I've got a couple of mates that I've used photos that they put up on Facebook and I'm like oh can I use that on my photo series please and they're all like yeah of course you can um, and in fact one of them Maz bless her she now, she now regularly takes photos and tags me in them going there you go photo photos for you so that's awesome thank you Maz I'm just going to stretch that lid out slightly because I don't want any because it's so dark I don't want any sort of barcoding or creasing showing up later. Do not stretch your lid like that unless you absolutely have to um, or you will end up with horrific deep creases like what I have got and you will not be happy. I promise you, you will not be happy. Uh, I'm just going to grab a little bit of micellar water on here. Just take that back a fraction. So the skin on your eyelids is the most delicate skin on all of your body. If you think about how easy it is to tear tissue paper, that's how easy it is to damage the skin on your eyes. So treat it with the delicacy that you would tissue paper and you should be fine. Okay. Clean the brush off. This shows you a good palette when it stains the brushes. That's when you know you've got high pigment. Like this is actually one of the brush one of the lip brushes that Jeffrey has just done with Morphe. Um, because I wanted one that was nice and thin and flat for doing my eyes with. And I find that this sort of lip brush style that comes up to a point and is very fine at the side, absolutely great, especially if you're trying to get into that inner corner and you've got, you know, deep set eyes like me or double dead eyes or, you know, if you've got, I know a lot of people have got like a, a fold just that my husband's dreaming, hold on. I'm back, sorry about that. While I was, off, while I was talking to my husband, I used a bit of micellar water just to tidy the edges up. And I popped a little bit more of the chrome pebble on so that it gives, although it did mix with some of the pigment, which is why it looks lilac. Never mind. Right, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. I'm going to go in with this brush, I'm going to load it with pigment, and I'm then going to spritz it with this fixing spray. This is the iHeart Revolution Vanilla and Coconut. You can use anything. You can use a moisturising spray like Mario Badescu or Mac Fix Plus. You can use a priming spray. You can use a setting spray. You can use a finishing spray. You can even just use clean water. All we're doing is wetting the pigment. We're not foiling it. That's something completely different. But we are wetting the pigment. Right, I'm going to go into Tropical Fruit. pack some of that. This is back on the original slush because I'm going into a shimmer. So I've packed the pigment both sides. Wet the pigment. Now I always sort of run that like that in my hand just to dry the ferrule off. 
so that you don't get any moisture coming down and loosening the um, the bristles and the glue that's holding them. And then I'm going to apply this to the middle of the eye like this. Just doing two stripes either side at the moment. So if I can, I want to try and get a lighter colour in the middle. So let's see if I can do the same this side. This is why I pack pigment onto both sides of the brush. Absolutely love this original slush palette. It, like I said, I think it was actually my first ever um, rainbow palette that I ever bought. But it is a stunner. Uh, she has got a deal on the website at the moment that if you buy slush one and two together, you do get a discount. And I believe, I don't know whether my Bomber discount code will work on that, but, you know, give it a try. And now I'm going to go into the other shimmer in here, in the orange striped section, which is Mango. A Mambo, Mango Italiano. I know it's Mambo, not Mango, but, you know. A mango, mango siciliano, all you galaprezi do the mambo like a crazy. Okay, clearly I need more coffee this morning. It's it's really dull and overcast out there. We had a beautiful day yesterday, which was awesome, because I drove down to see my mum and dad and my baby brother and his wife, my gorgeous stepsister, my, my gorgeous sister-in-law and our wonderful nephews because we have two now and the youngest nephew was actually born on hubby's birthday last year which is awesome so they share a birthday so i'm just popping this lighter shade in the middle just to give it a real going to close that before I manage to dig a hole in it again. Right, I'm just going to grab Jeffrey's 24 carat highlight palette. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to go into Liberace. Liberace onto the brush. Like so. And again. Wet the pigment. Dry the ferrule. Grab the little mirror. Just gonna pop a little bit of that. There we go. Just to really lighten the middle and give it that boom effect of the sun just going down below the horizon lovely right I am going to pause you while I knock everything over apparently uh, I'm going to pause you while I go and put some foundation etc on and do my brows and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. So please don't go anywhere and uh, you're going to see me instantly. I will see you the very next time that I press the record button. All right. Hello, I am back. As you can see I decided on purple brows. 
purple browns. I really need to go and get a coffee. Right, I'm going to pick up this deep purple again, this purple potion from Slush 2 on my flat top brush. And I'm going to run that really tightly under the bottom lashes. Like so. I always flinch this side because the number of times I've poked myself in the eye. Because I haven't got my contact lens in and obviously I've not got my glasses on. And the viewfinder is quite a way away. And I'm really kind of relying on muscle memory right now. There we go. Success! Now, the next brush I'm going to use is actually out of a Tarte palette. It was a Tarte Swamp Queen Graveyard Girl collab. I just love this, love, 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 love this brush. And I think I'm going to go into... I'm going to Boozy Berry in this slush too. I'm just going to buff the lower lash line ever so softly, just to smudge it and get a bit of a smoked out, grungier, softer look. I love this brush because it's flat top but it's really chunky so it really gets so well up underneath your lower lash line when you're doing this bit. Why do I always seem to come down lower one side than the other? Probably because my eyes are not symmetrical as we discussed earlier. Right. Now it's time to highlight. And that's my brush on the floor. Fantastic. I'm having a bit of a klutzy day, folks. You've probably noticed. Right, this is a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago. And I'm going to go into Jeffrey's Sarcophagus Highlighter. This was originally one of the colours in the 24 karat palette which was designed for deeper skin tones but this is perfect if you are super pale like me and you've got uh, neutral to cool undertones it can be very difficult finding a gold or a champagne highlight that doesn't look odd when you put it on this is perfect it really is I'm just going to go into the inner corner here now what I like to do with mine because of the shape of my eyes I like to actually pull it along underneath and just sort of buff it in to the shades we run under the eye. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, you can just leave it as in a corner highlight like that. But, you know, as I said, I've found with my eye shape that just finishes the look off nicely. I love this, it's such a wet look highlighter, which is my favourite type to be honest. I like to glow so brightly the gods can't see what I'm up to. Right, I am now going to pause you one last time while I chuck some more highlight over my face, stick some mascara on and a lippy, do something with my hair and I'll be back for the final look. I am back. Obviously I used sarcophagus over the rest of my face, the mascara was the Catrice Glamondol waterproof and the lippy is, uh, is this one from Revolution? And it's Prime, is the name of the shade. And it's a bang on dupe for Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk, which for me is my lips but better. Perfect. And the setting spray that I used just happens to be one of the ones from this. 
and it's mint chocolate and it smells divine it really does um they've actually started sending i haven't done a little one yet so i'll show you they actually send them out now with little screw tops on the bottles with the pump separately um, so that you don't get there's no risk of oh, there's uh, less of a risk of spillage when it's on route to you so this box had two long ones and one little one and I haven't done the little one yet perfect handbag size things they're great for uh, particularly nights out in the summer when it's hot and you're starting to feel a bit oh, and your makeup could do with a bit of a just blot any oils off and go in with a couple of spritz of that and it's it's brilliant I love it again discount code for that is in the description box so this is my final look I will put the picture back up there what do you think how do I do hmm? would you have done it like this or do you have done it differently if you were challenged to do that photo which palettes would you have used let me know I find that interesting Right, if you are one of my 4F babies, please, please, I've got a rough bit on my tooth. It's really irritating my tongue. It makes me feel like I should be sticking my tongue halfway across my mouth to talk. You didn't need to know that, but I thought I'd throw it in anyway. Um, yeah, if you're one of my 4F family, please double check you're still subscribed because YouTube are still unsubscribing people. It's getting beyond a joke now, it really is. Um, every week I'm seeing my numbers go down and then I get messages from people saying I was unsubscribed from you and then my numbers go back up again. Um, so yeah, please, please keep an eye on and uh, just make sure you are still subscribed and that you've got the bell rung and you've chosen all notifications. Once you've done that, I'm gonna need you to go over to Linda and check out her film to see exactly how she interpreted the same photo. Which palettes will she have used? Which colours called to her most? How will her look turn out? Hmm? The only way to find out, sweetie, is to pop over to her channel and watch her film. Which channel and film will be linked in the description box below. I've got to put a lot of stuff in the description box today. <laughs> if, however, you've arrived here from Linda's channel, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed this film. Uh, I'm the slightly nutty, half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird living in the south of England who uh, struggles with chronic pain all day, every day. And... Uh, Doing makeup is the one thing I can still enjoy, even with being in pain. And it's the, pretty much the only hobby that I can still do when I'm in pain like this. Although I will admit there are days when I'm in so much pain I can't even lift a brush. And those are the days that I do not film. But uh, yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed it here. I hope you enjoyed the film. If you did, it'd be great if you'd hit that like button for me, comment, share, maybe even think about subscribing. If you do subscribe, don't forget to ring my bell. Ring my bell. And uh, make sure you choose all notifications because otherwise you won't get any at all. YouTube. Gotta love if you're not too sure yet whether you can handle watching this slightly scatty woman yak on about all kinds of things, usually including makeup, I've got an awful lot of other films you can go and have a look at. Alternatively, if you do like it, 
you've got a really good binge session coming because there's a lot of films on my channel you can watch. Right, that is quite enough for me for one day. So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.